it's kind of sadly ironic that with an, an asset as important as someone's retirement account, and for many Americans their defined contribution account is their only retirement account, that the law does not presently require that investors and workers be given the right to know what they are being charged for. I think most people would be astonished to hear this, that if they went to the people who are managing their retirement savings and said, I noticed that you took $500 out of my $50,000 balance last year, or $750 out of my $50,000 balance last year, what did I get for it? that under the present law they don't have the right to know that. The bill that the chairman has introduced changes that and I believe it changes it in an effective uh, and useful way for employers and for employees. The consequences of not being able to make an intelligent choice about one's self-directed account are rather extreme. Uh, research done by the General Accountability Office concluded that a 100 basis point difference, that's to say the difference between a 1.5% fee and a half percent fee, over the course of someone's lifetime could make a 20% difference in how much is in their retirement account. Let me say that again. That the person who pays a fee of a half a percent versus a person who pays a fee of 1.5%, when she retires, may have 20% more, the person paying the half percent may have 20% more than the person who paid a point and a half. Now in some cases you should pay the point and a half because it's the right thing for you. But the purpose of this bill and a related discussion that the subcommittee has been having about qualified independent investment advice, a subject that we will be revisiting, uh, the purpose of this bill is to be sure that the important material facts, the critical facts that are necessary for someone to make an intelligent choice are in front of that person. The legislation accomplishes three tasks. It requires important material disclosure to both employers and employees about what the fees are and what they're going for. It requires the disclosure of any conflicts of interest that may exist between the person collecting the fee and any of the uh, firms that are managing the money to which the accounts are given. And finally, it requires that all Americans who are in uh, defined contribution plans uh, be given the opportunity, function, it practically requires this, that be given the opportunity to choose a low cost index fund type option as opposed to an actively managed option. No one has to do it. No one's required to do anything. But it says that people who wait on tables or teach school or drive buses or build houses for a living ought to have the same range of choices that wealthier people do when it comes to how their money is managed. I think this is eminently reasonable, eminently workable, and eminently fair. And so when those who believe in this system, and I do, I do, say that the 401k system is about freedom and choice and personal responsibility, we agree completely. People should have the freedom to choose what's best for them. They should have qualified independent investment advice so they can evaluate what's best for them. They ought to know the material facts about what's being taken out of their account and why and by whom so they can make the best choice among the options in front of them. And then, yes, they will take personal responsibility for the consequences of their choice. So the bill that's before the subcommittee and will hopefully be before, before the full committee shortly, I think, furthers that agenda. We look forward to hearing from the witnesses this morning and from our colleagues on the committee as we explore these issues. By agreement with the, um, the ranking member of the subcommittee, we're going to have statements from uh, the full committee uh, chairperson ranking member as well.